المتحدة على هذه الكلمة على كلمة Another question for His Excellency, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, you have, you said a lot of condemnation words uh, regarding Iran. When are you going to put in act what you are saying, in, I mean, in this three days here in, in Riyadh? With respect to Iran and their absence here, and I think uh, His Excellency clearly addressed why Iran is not here today. Uh, Iran continues its hegemonic activities uh, in this region, in Yemen, in Iraq, in Syria, in its support of Hezbollah in Lebanon. And until Iran shows its willingness to be a good neighbor, I think it's the words that were used by many, and shows its willingness to cease its enablements that go on, their payment of foreign fighters, their payment of militias, to go into other countries and destabilize those countries, then Iran will not have a place around this table that was set today. So it is our hope that, and we have a new uh, leadership, or a renewed leadership beginning another term uh, in Iran, that they will begin to examine what this behavior is gaining for them, and whether they will find their way back to a place that Iran historically enjoyed good relations with its neighbors. And that's what we hope they find their way back to as well. In the meantime, we will continue to take action to make it clear to Iran when their behavior is unacceptable. And that means in terms of carrying out and supporting acts of terrorism, continuing the development in, of their ballistic missile programs. Uh, we will continue to take action through sanctions and we will continue to encourage others in the global community to take action as well so that Iran understands this is not acceptable. So we will be dealing with Iran in the economic sanction front and we will be dealing with Iran in these countries where they have decided to put their presence militarily. بريئة بدون حق ما يعتبر يعتبر إرهابي أي شخص يدمر بيوت يقتل أبرياء الأطفال النساء الشيوخ بدون حق هذا إرهاب السلام عليكم نايف الشيخ جريد الشيخ الوسط مع الوزير أريد أن أسأل سؤال واحد وبسيط هل تلقت المملكة العربية السعودية هل تلقت المملكة العربية السعودية وعود وتأكيدات من أن كل المواقف التي خرجت من واشنطن اليوم هي مواقف ستطبق على أرض الميدان بواقعية وحزم علاقة المملكة العربية السعودية مع الولايات المتحدة تمتد أكثر من ثمانية عقود العلاقة السياسية بدأت في باجتماع المغفولة بإذن الله الملك عبد العزيز مع الرئيس الأمريكي فرانكلين دلانو روزفلت في 1945 منذ ذلك الوقت إلى الآن والولايات المتحدة دائما عند كلمتها وهذا والمملكة دائما عند كلمتها فهذا سبب تكثيف العلاقات بين المملكة وبين الولايات المتحدة على مدى العقود الماضية نحن نثق في كلمة الرئيس الأمريكي ونحن نثمن وعود الرئيس الأمريكي ونحن نتطلع للعمل مع الرئيس ترامب في كل المجالات التي تخدم المصالح المشتركة وتخدم الأمن والسلام في المنطقة وفي العالم Thank you very much, I'm Shaukat Paracha, uh, traveling from Pakistan, especially for this summit today. Uh, my question to Excellency, uh, the Foreign Minister of uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is that Pakistan has been fighting against terrorism since 9-11 and we suffered more than 50,000 innocent lives. How has been the assessment in this conference that uh, there could be shared learning from the experiences that Pakistan has got in this war against terror. And my question to Excellency is, uh, the, the, the partnership desire today with the Muslim world, 
must have certain proces processes to move forward. Uh, there is a lot of fear among the Muslim communities, including myself and my, my friends. Uh, there is a notion of Islamophobia all around in different countries. When partnership has been sought and desired and there has been a great response from all, um, most of the Muslim countries that were present today, how these processes will have their logical end to bridge the gap and redress the fears among the Muslim communities. Thank you. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm happy to. Uh, with respect to, uh, I think, the relationship and how the, the Muslim world is viewed, if I assume you listened to President Trump's speech this afternoon, I hope he dispelled the concerns that many might have uh, with that speech. And in terms of specific processes, much of what came from uh, the two days that we've been here in Riyadh, uh, working with our counterparts in the kingdom as well as working with the GCC countries, and we had a very good uh, meeting this morning among the GCC countries, was to put in place specific plans of action that working together, I think we will also improve the understanding among ourselves. Uh, the creation of the center to counter uh, extremism messaging. The working together on disrupting terror financing networks. Clearly, the economic activities uh, between this region and the United States are also all about strengthening relations in the United States. But I think for the United States, the United States, the ونفهم منظورنا تجاه بعضنا البعض وأعرف أن الوفد بأكملها المسافر مع الرئيس له تقدير كبير تجاه هذه المنطقة لتاريخها وعاداتها وثقافاتها ولدينا فهم أفضل الآن أيضا للدين الإسلامي we hope people in, in the Muslim community will make a similar effort to understand the American people's interest and concerns that they may have. But I think, importantly, out of this speech the President delivered this afternoon, what he said, again, is this fight is ours together. It is not between us. It is ours together. And it's only together that we will ultimately prevail and that it is not a fight among religions, not a fight between uh, Shia, Sunni, it's not a fight between Christians, Jews, any of the faiths. This is a fight of good against evil, and in all of those three great faiths that millions of Americans follow, we are guided by that same tenet. This is what unites us in attacking this evil face of terrorism that has befallen us and has hurt so many around the world. I think um, Pakistan had, can play a big role in the war against terrorism and by sharing its experiences and by, um, by learning from the experiences of others. I want to add my voice to what um, uh, Rex said about the uh, issue, the importance of tolerance and coexistence. I believe that the fact that this summit took place is historic. I cannot overemphasize the importance of it to the history of the world. This is a, a t unless we are able to move from notions of a clash of civilizations and move towards a partnership among civilizations, we will not be able to eradicate the scourge of terrorism, or which emanates from extremism. And extremism emanates from ignorance. People in the Muslim world believe there is enmity towards them in the West, and so they use that to recruit psychopaths, who go and murder people, who then increase the negative attitude of people in the West towards Islam that causes Western countries to take steps that then fuel the cycle in the Islamic world and also vice versa. You have extremists in the West 
who uh, who take very bigoted positions or ignorant positions towards the Islamic world, which causes them to recruit psychopaths who demand things or try to do things that provoke a reaction in the Islamic world, and the vicious cycle continues. Unless we move away from this, and then if we are able to move away from this, we are able to isolate the terrorists as mere criminals and psychopaths, and then it becomes a law enforcement matter, and we can deal with it much more effectively. The president deserves a lot of credit for taking this step, making his first visit outside the U.S. to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the birthplace of Islam and land of the two holy mosques, and then going to Israel, and then going to the Vatican to deal with the Jewish world and with the Christian world in order to try to bring the three religions together. This is the way to proceed. This is the way we move from enmity to partnership. This is a fight, not a clash of civilization. This is a fight for civilization. It's as the president said, it's good versus evil. And good includes everybody. Christian, Jew, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, everyone. And evil 